You're joining us for this episode of Street Soldiers. I'm your host, Lisa Evers, and we are focusing on racial stereotypes, myths versus realities. What are real? What's fake? Just because you wear a freaking sombrero, that doesn't make you Mexican. <laughs> I see white people think of the mile wearing a sarape, walking a donkey with a sombrero. You don't look at them and go, hola, amigo. No, you're like, hey, Ted. I never saw Asian people on television or in movies, so my dreams were somewhat limited. When it comes to comedy, everyone is making jokes about what others think they are. Rednecks don't get to take a lot of vacations. So if somebody comes around and offers to fly us somewhere for free, we're going. If you borrow money from a white person, don't never give it back. This is it, that's the last $30. <laughs> you borrow some money from a black person, they're gonna threaten you before they give it to you. But no one was laughing when Maine Governor Paul LePage warned drug dealers, widely assumed to be young men of color, to stay out of his state. These are guys of the name D-Money, Smoothie, Shifty, uh, these type of guys that come from Connecticut, New York. They come up here, they sell their heroin, then they go back home. Incidentally, half the time they impregnate a young white girl before they leave. Washington Post reporter Christopher Ingram investigated racial stereotyping and found evidence of what researchers call unconscious bias. Everybody says I'm not racist, right? Like nobody, if you ask in a public opinion survey, nobody says I am a racist. But all of this, and this is true of white people, black people, everyone, we all have these unconscious biases, biases that motivate our actions. Statistically, our nation is becoming more diverse. The Brookings Institute projects that by 2025, minority youth will become the majority of Americans under the age of 20. Every American is critical uh, to our success. And, um, you know, Daddy called it the moving toward the beloved community and realizing the dignity, the worth, and the value of all of humankind. I'm so glad you're joining us for this episode of Street Soldiers. I'm your host, Lisa Evers, on Twitter and Instagram, at Lisa Evers. All previous Street Soldiers episodes are on LisaEvers.com. You can check us out there. And we have a really important topic today, so I want you to hit me up on Twitter with your comments, at Lisa Evers. We are talking about racial stereotypes. Does your color determine how people treat you or the culture you come from and the culture that you have put yourself in? We're going to talk about some of the common stereotypes types that are out there and also how people are feeling about them and has the mass media actually caught up with the reality that many of us are living in our own lives diversity has increased on by all measures in terms of residence in terms of education in terms of relationships in terms of children but by the same token there are still pockets and just ongoing problems of stereotypes where people feel as if they're just not getting a fair shake the American dream is being denied to them them because of the color of their skin and misperceptions about them. So that's what we're going to talk about in this episode of Street Soldiers. We have an amazing panel. Very excited. We're going to get right to it right now. Moses Mo Verno is with us. Now, he should sound familiar to you. He's the mastermind behind the hit series Money and Violence. He plays Rafe. And Money and Violence is now coming out first on Tidal. Correct. Then on YouTube. Correct. And you guys are doing big things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the past 12 months have been amazing, and um, we've had a lot of forward movement and progression. Uh, we scored the deal with uh, Title as well as the deal with Lionsgate. So aside from being on Title for season two, hopefully by season three, we'll be to a premium network. Congratulations. We're going to talk more about your story and the struggle behind that and all the hard work that you guys did Thank in you. just a moment. Let me introduce the rest of the panel. Mm -hmm. Nitty Scott, she's an MC from Brooklyn. She made her name. Her video went viral. She did a freestyle over Kanye West's monster. Mm -hmm. that had everybody talking about her. She's performed at the BET Hip Hop Awards. Her latest single is Negrita. Yes, Negrita. Negrita. Shout out to my mixed chicks. <laughs> <laughs> Nitty, thank you so much for being with us. Thank we you appreciate for having it. Me. Also with us is Hot 97's own DJ Drewski. You can hear him pretty much all the time on Hot 97. <laughs> <laughs> Monday through. We're glad you could fit Street Soldiers yes, in your course. schedule. Street Soldiers is my second best show besides mine. Okay, thank you. All right. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. I still love you. Um, he does the Monday through Thursday. It's the new at 2 a.m. Yep. A lot of underground artists, too. You're giving a lot right, of right. new artists a real big shine. Right. And then, Which, Saturday, 3 
p.m. to 7 p.m. Correct. Then after that, you're out in the clubs and you're doing your, your DJ Turn thing in the clubs, turning it up mm -hmm. everywhere in the tri state, mm -hmm. internationally. And Sunday at 11 p.m., you got a special show, right. too. Strictly for tri state artists, Jersey, Connecticut, New York. Nice. So you must be getting tons and tons of tons, texts, yeah. calls, DMs. But I love it. We're breaking new artists and putting on for the city. And really giving a lot of, a lot, a lot of exposure to the talent that's right. here. Yeah. That hasn't had a chance. We have great talent sitting right next to us. Yeah. yeah. I was going to take that up with him later why I haven't been invited, but... <laughs> All right, good. Don't worry. By the end of the show, you'll be on. And also joining us is Tamika Mallory. She's been with us before on Hot 97 Street Soldiers. She is a civil rights leader. If you have been at any of the rallies and any of the protests over the last couple years for community police relations, for ending... Uh, ending discrimination really against people of color for fairness and justice for all in terms of policing in our communities you've seen Tamika and she also owns her own business Mallory Consulting Tamika thank you so much for being with thank us thank you for having me Lisa great to be here we really we really appreciate it Mo I want to start with you on this um, the governor of Maine recently said that he did not want drug dealers from New York and Connecticut with names like D-Money, Shifty, and Smoothie coming up to Maine, selling their heroin, and impregnating white girls. Yeah, I find that to be um, just very ig ignorant, you know. The same way that America's a melting pot, all of our neighborhoods are melting pots. You know, you do have good people, bad people. I mean, you have people with different aspirations. E every black man in an urban neighborhood does not strive to be a drug dealer. You understand? You have those that go to college. You have those who may have dropped out of high school who have jobs. You understand? You have those who may live on their own, those that may still live with their parents, but it's a melting pot. You cannot group people into one box and just assume that everyone is that particular way. And Tamika, when you hear comments like that by an official, here is the governor of Maine, a nationally prominent figure does that sh highlight kind of the struggle that you have in trying to get people to recognize the need for justice for all? Absolutely. I mean, he's a person of influence, and when he says something like that, it leads people to believe that whatever stereotypes they already think are there about people of color are true. Um, you know, you have to be very responsible about what you say, because as we're in this country at this time, sort of on fire dealing with race relations, one of the things that we have to do as leaders is not uh, put, place those stereotypes on people and be careful what we say so that we can be in a more fair just society and really just look at the facts of a lot of these high-profile cases that have come well, out that's, that's you know another issue is that when you look at some of these cases the issue is the blanket um, you know idea that all of us are thugs and if you if they said you did something wrong you probably did but let's look at how many people are in prison for you know incarcerated right now who uh, are being exonerated because of DNA and other things where you find out that they actually didn't commit the crimes mm -hmm. but the fact that the jurors and the court the criminal justice system just said you know we're not necessarily gonna look at the facts we're just gonna say that you're guilty because you come from a community of people who we believe are guilty of committing crime and there's strong psychological the strong evidence for that the American Psychological Association did a whole bunch of tests recently about perceptions especially white perceptions of black males right. black teenagers right. seeing them as more menacing seeing them as bigger than they are and that type of thing coming up how do you know what to say to people of a different race hey yo it's your boy Fetty what may you watch the street soldiers on Fox Pops? <laughs> Thank you, baby. Nitty, let me come to you with the with the Latina picture here. There've been a lot of comments and just commentary, a lot of it negative too, about the la Latino community in general, as if it's just one community. What stereotypes offend you the most? Yeah, um, there's a huge generalization of you know what it means to be Latino um, and you have for example people like Sofia Vergara who um, sort of represent the quintessential Latina um, we're feisty we are you know ladies in red and you know we always want to cha-cha and you know it's just this this one um, idea of us that's perpetuated and the thing is that there, there's nothing wrong with the Sofia Vergara's of the world it's about the representation and the fact that um, you know, you, you have these other people such as like America Ferreira, you know, Ugly Betty, that come and sort of 
blast that entire idea and say, okay, we don't all identify with the same exact thing just because we all come from this community. We're all individuals. But also with her, she encountered a lot of stereotypes, especially having a, a heavy accent yes. when she was acting. And then she ended up setting up her own company and really taking control of her business. Yes. And now using that stereotype, to she's been herself. one of the most, she's one of the most successful actresses in Hollywood. Yes, exactly. Um, and I think that that's important to, to recognize. I also wanted to kind of stem off of something that you had said about um, how the mass media sort of perpetuates things and that the speech surrounding it is very important because the speech creates the attitude which then creates like the climate right. of, of what we're dealing with and I've seen you know situations where you'll have um, you know a cop who is guilty of you know some sort of misconduct and the way that they'll present it is they'll show a mugshot of the victim mm -hmm. a mugshot of the of the black or Latino person and then a honorable photo of the cop in you know some sort of you know honorable fashion despite the fact that when you follow up with the article he did something wrong and he did not well the images are everything especially in today's society where everything is, is, is so visual DJ Drewski yes. as you're in the hip-hop game mm -hmm. one of the biggest hottest rising stars there with you know as a DJ and as a personality as well have you ever had any experiences where you've been stereotyped almost in reverse because you're a white DJ right. in a game that's that's predominantly where the most successful people are black and Latino yeah, of course and uh, being on Hot 97 majority of my bookings are like African-American parties where it's like 80% African-American so when I walk in you know they're like is he gonna be able to speak our language when it comes to the party and so what I like to do I, I have fun with it I understand it and I get it it's clear so what I like to do is you know introduce myself let them look at me. So what do you say? Like, what do you say? No, it's like... <laughs> Don't worry, I'm going to get it popping. We're going to turn up. I'll jokes. Yeah, like, <laughs> oh, yeah, you, you, you didn't know I was white, right? Because I understand the music. Right. You know, it comes down to the music, so it's pretty much simple. But I have fun with that boundary. And then, you know, five songs in, now everyone is comfortable and like, wow, he really knows how to play, you know? And it, it's good, but yes, it's on the flip side of things. And on top of it, you know, when I'm walking in the club or all my, I have no white friends. So it's like, all my friends are African American or Hispanic. So they kind of feel like, okay, he, he's part of it, you know? I just want to say that on behalf of black people, because I'm okay. sure we're the ones doing it to you. I apologize. No, it's all good. <laughs> I understand. I'm, I understand. I know we're the ones. Right. I don't, sometimes, like, I don't see it as much. But I could feel it, when it's, you know, once they're looking like... Like, people, don't, people are too polite right. to actually come out and say something, but you, you kind of feel that vibe, like, oh, wait a minute, what just happened Right, here? right. Uh, yeah. But then it, it works, too, because then, like, the females are like, oh, wow, he's cool. Like, oh, wow. So it's like, yeah. Uh -huh, he thought I didn't know. All right, there it yeah. is. <laughs> Coming up, how parents can have the biggest influence. Yo, y'all, check it out. What's the deal? This is Fox 5. You watching Street Soldiers with my girl, Lisa Evans. It's the chef right here. Love is love. Peace. Thank you so much, Raekwon. Awesome. Sunday Funday has a night of all new laughs. You gotta go pee. First, it's Bob's Burgers, followed by The Simpsons, and Cooper Barrett gets funny and fresh. Yeah, a stroke. Plus, Family Guy and the new comedy Border Town. You look at the statistics across the board and the black community, the income, you look at education levels, more black men in college than in prison right now, even though the incarceration issue is still still a huge, huge problem. But it's like the image and what does everybody want? The, the guy that's the coolest is the guy that's the most thugged out, mm -hmm. the one that is the raunchiest. The most celebrated. I mean, the hip hop, th this, these are the one, these are the characters that are the most successful. And even the guys that start out kind of like as poet rappers, mm -hmm. that's a persona well, that they have to that's a great balance that we're fighting right we fight that every day the fact that you can have a love and hip-hop on TV and have millions of viewers and then another group of people try to do a show that is about something positive and we're not watching that so that is a conditioning that we have to work on but if you look at the education system in general if you live in a particular area you have less resources in your school as a kindergartner or pre-k uh, you know student than another child who may live in a better zip code in a different place so we're starting off our 
communities wrong. And I think that's what the president has been talking about. Look at about. educational apartheid. And looking looking yeah. at how we right there level the playing field because I believe if you do that, as we as young people who are more educated get to be older. My son, he doesn't really like loving hip hop. It's kind of cool, but he's a, a more educated kid that knows that that stuff is not really, that's not it's what's not up. edifying. You know, exactly. Tamika, once again, I think that falls back on the parent. You, and, and, and the reason I'm saying this is because no matter how, a lot of parents don't understand the children are really supposed to receive two educations, one at school and one in the home. Many kids are deprived of that education in the but home. What do you do when you're an uneducated parent at home? Right. What do you As do as a result of the systemic? Or what do you do if you're a single parent? You, what do you do if you're a single parent and you have to go to school and work a job and maybe a half of find another job? Find the time. To find the time. You have to understand that I myself, my schedule is hectic, but. I make time for my child, regardless of whatever. I don't care what it is that has to be done. Like, this isn't even something for me to even contemplate, you know. It's, it's me, unfortunately, me and my child, we don't live together, you know. And it's just like when her mother calls and she's like, oh, my God, I'm stuck at the dentist. And could you please pick her up? And I'm like, why are you asking me? The same urgency that you have, that she has to be picked up, whereas there is no I can't make it, is the same urgency I should have. If you tell me you can't make it, then I need to find a way. Regardless of whatever it is that's scheduled today, I need to find a way to go get my child. And I believe it's the same thing as far as education. I don't care what neighborhood you live in. Yes, the world is working against you, but that is your but child. See, but, some, but the people who are most successful and the people that have overcome tremendous obstacles that I've interviewed throughout my career have taken that attitude. The world world is may not be helping me but I'm gonna make my own way I'm your host Lisa Evers and we're gonna continue with this right after this break This is New York. There's a lot going on. And you're not only as we talk about some of these racial stereotypes, if you just look on the internet, right. okay, every group has the particular stereotypes. So I want to find out if you guys think they're true or if they're false. Uh -oh. Okay? Whites have no rhythm. False. 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 <laughs> You want me to bust oh, the move? Oh, false. Yeah, no, false. Yeah, can you? No. <laughs> want me to no. Millie Rock? Tamika, that, uh, was, that was a late false. Oh, no, I didn't that was a late false. I thought you were asking the white guy whether or not his people had I, I want to ask, I wanna <laughs> ask everyone. All right, let's, let's talk about blacks. Best at sports. Top athletes. No. It's some. It's still a I mean, some. it's a some. You it's say a some and it depends most, on the sports? Most. I wouldn't even say most because it's not most of the great black athletes that got into professional sports. You know, you have a lot of great basketball players that are still on the streets. Right, right. Yeah, that's that's true too. So, yeah. But that still means they're good at sports. They're no, but what I'm saying is, so you, okay. you have just as great white players that didn't get into this professional sports. So therefore, how can you really assess by the limited amount of people that got into the NBA or the NFL? In terms of the Latino community, too, there's, there's a tremendous diversity uh -huh. from the Puerto Rican culture to the more newly, to the newly arrived immigrants. Uh -huh. But the stereotype is, has Hispanics are mostly illegal. Does that bother you? Mm. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Especially Latinos being such a backbone, you know, um, for in society right now. Um, to, to say that is just, it's very, um, I can't even lie. think. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, it's a lie. It's not true. It's just not true. Okay. Like, it's, it's like right, not true. How about, the, how about this um, one about the hardworking, the, the hardworking nature uh -huh. that is stereotyped for the Hispanics? Right, which is, is crazy because... Is that good? But it's turned into a negative. It's turned into a negative when it's like, we'll so do your job for the country to pay. and contributed to our society. Um, and was willing to work hard and wasn't, didn't come here with their hand out. But we'll do your job for half the pay. Yeah, um... Un <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> here's, the, here's the thing. I think it's just, it's about the generalization. Yeah. You know, uh, does, what, you know what? I think that's what it is with all this stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's it's generalization. Like, does that exist? Absolutely. But we're not all maids. We're not all, you know. Um, I, I, I think it's a setup. I mean, you put people 
In these neighborhoods, you give them limited resources, and because of that, they have to take a job for half the pay, and then you criticize them for it. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think the stereotypes are just crutches of the uninformed. Thank you all very, very much for being part of Street Soldiers. Uh, Moses Mo Verno, mastermind behind Money and Violence. Uh, Nitty Scott, MC, DJ Drewski from Hot 97, and Tamika Mallory, civil rights leader and business owner, Mallory Consulting. I want to thank you all very, very much for being part thank you. of this episode of Street Soldiers. And yes, I am hip hop because I never stop promoting. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag can't stop, won't stop. And uh, check me out, of course, on the Fox 5 News at 5 and 10. Remember, use your mind, it's your best weapon. I hope it's your only weapon. I'm Lisa Evers. You know what to do. Push for peace. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Rotimi Man. You watching the beautiful Lisa Evers on Street Soldiers on Fox 5. Yay! That was perfect. Thank you. Thank you.